Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at the glamorous side, keeping large constrictors. I just want to get these guys out, get their enclosures clean, and kind of talk with everybody a little bit about, you know, so much of the stuff that's going on in the reptile community right now. You know, legislation that's, that's you know, we're having to deal with. Um, you know, we've had some incidents here over the last year that's had a negative impact. And it's just a big misconception, I think, on the part of a lot of lawmakers and a lot of these so-called animal rights groups that, um, you know, have got a higher kill percentage than any shelter that I can think of off the top of my head, that, um, you know, this is somehow bad for the animals, that it's somehow bad for conservation and so forth, and that these animals are somehow too dangerous for us to keep. Um, if you can see this boy right here behind me, this is a 13-foot probably 45 pound um, Burmese python. It's an albino. And um, see how he's pushing on the door here? This guy is such a puppy dog. And you're gonna see, excuse me, it's kind of warm down here. But you're gonna see in almost all of my videos where I really push hook training and things like that. And 99% of the time, you know, that's right on point. Um, but there comes a point in time after you've had these animals long enough and you've learned to read them and you know what their state of mind is you know you can have such a stress-free relationship with them and so it's it's stuff like this that i like to show just basic everyday stuff you know this isn't the big glamorous showing the big monster snake on you this is what we have to do in order to keep our animals safe and healthy and um <laughs> and he is so ready to come out So I'm just going to start getting him cleaned up real quick and kind of talk a little bit while I do it. So, And this guy has got such a good disposition. I'm really, really happy I would run across him a couple years ago. How you doing, bud? Hey. Come on. Come on. Time to come out and get your house cleaned. See, and I'm giving him just a little bit of space when I first open up the door. So I want to make sure that he's, you know, that he knows what's going on. A little touch right here. How you doing? You're such a good boy, ain't you? Such a good fella. Yes, you are. You're just happy to be getting out, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, you're one of my favorite boys, that's for sure. So yeah, guys, a little disclaimer here. This is not handling training by any stretch of the imagination. I really don't recommend doing this with any of your snakes unless you are very, very confident in your relationship with them and you can read their behavior really, really well. In this case, you know, and I've said it before, there's, um, you know, I, I, I like to try and make some kind of a, uh, handling videos with, with animals that I'm not familiar with that are a little bit more defensive and stuff so you can, you know, kind of demonstrate more handling techniques. And it's really hard to do, you know, because the only way I could make my snakes defensive really is to do something mean to them and I don't do that, so. And you're just happy to be getting out and we'll get your house cleaned up real quick. So, and I'm gonna try my best to avoid letting him rip the camera tripod down while I'm doing this. Oh, but I mean, you're taking them out of their enclosures like this, you just gotta be really careful. You know, it's only like a quarter inch right there on the edge, so you don't wanna be folding their body in half over it. And you gotta let go of your platform, bud. Come on, there we go. Such a good boy. All right. So he's been, he's been cruising his glass and it's really kind of hard on him on the weeks that I'm working because I'm on call so much I'm either working or sleeping. And what I use to clean with this is just regular old generic brown Listerine. So yeah, and then here's the glamorous part of it. They love using their water bowls for a toilet. So. Alright. 
then I let that sit there with a little bit of Listerine in it for a little while. <laughs> what are you doing, my friend? You're just all over, ain't you? So one of the big problems with the Lacey Act, and um, you know, it was something that was defeated, shot down a while back, and now this new legislation is talking about bringing it back, where you can't transport your animals across state lines at that point. And um, it gives, gives local fish and wildlife the uh, kind of full reign to determine which animals can be transported and which ones can't. So say for instance, in my case, you know, I'm a couple states away from Florida where the Burmese pythons are invasive down there. And there's an actual need to regulate them because it does actually have an environmental impact. Up here, if this snake was to get released, it wouldn't survive the winter. So, um, so from that aspect, you know, we're perfectly safe up here with these guys. You know, the problem that keepers, you know, like myself are going to run into if they end up passing something like the Lacey Act um, and we can't transport our animals across state lines, that's going to really be detrimental as states start passing new laws because, ah, excuse me again, like I said, it's warm down here. But, you know, like I said, if, if they was to make Burmese pythons illegal here in North Carolina with no grandfather clause to keep them or anything like that. First of all, if they was to make reptiles, you know, to any great extent illegal in North Carolina, I'd leave North Carolina. I'd go somewhere because, you know, I am confident none of my animals are going to get out. None of them are going to escape. None of them are going to affect the local ecosystem. And you can see how awesome these animals are to work with right here. This guy, no malice whatsoever. He is literally part of the family and he knows it. So, you know, of course, that's that's one of the things that we stay on everybody about. You know, join, join US ARC, get your membership with them, stay up to date with the legislation and so forth, get the letters out and, you know, written to your representatives and whatnot. And it's all really important because that's the only way we're gonna be able to keep these guys. You know, I don't know if you guys can see it or not because he's on the ground right now, but it's like every time when I move over here, he starts crawling over here. I walk over to the water hose. He starts following me over there. I mean, we use the analogy of a puppy dog, but in so many ways, you know, once these animals feel safe, they feel secure, and you start to build that relationship with them, they really are, you know, just like puppy dogs. Can't be going up there. Trying to crawl into the Niles house. Can't do that. And it's starting to warm up down here a little bit. It's supposed to be 80 degrees Monday according to the uh, according to the weather app on my phone. Hopefully that's the case because if it actually does get up to 80, that means the Nile monitor is gonna go out for a walk. Because that poor kid has had cabin fever for a long time. He's got a whole lot of energy and ready to go run some of it out. Come on, my friend. Are you having fun? You can get out and make some noise. I'm sure I've showed you guys this before, but one of the pitfalls to having these PVC prefab stuff, these small little tracks that these doors sit on, and um, these snakes are just so powerful. You know, if he gets in there, if I don't tie this down, tie the handles and wedge this right here, he can get in there and just pop that thing right off of there. So it's a really good incentive, in my opinion, to just build your own enclosures a lot of times. So I don't have to worry about that with any of the other ones. So now we got to get Tigger's house. He is my... Uh, Tiger, purple tiger reticulated python. We're gonna get him cleaned up. And he may not be quite as easy to work with. He is coming out of blue and getting ready to shed. So 
You will notice I've got the hook for him. Being a big male reticulated python, you got to be a little careful with him. Hey, buddy. Come on. See if we can get him out pretty easily. There you go. That's a good boy. And he's been sitting here on the cool side of his enclosure, just relaxing. And even still, you can see, you know, a big male retic like this, he is such a well-behaved guy. I don't think I've ever, I can't think of a time, even when I first got him, that I ever really got any animosity out of this guy. And him being in shed like this, and not particularly happy about coming out and being messed with, he's doing so good. Ain't you, buddy? And you guys will see when you get a big retick like this with a bunch of energy and a bunch of stuff for him to get into. He's going to have to hang out in the bin while I clean his house. He is always such a workout. And one thing that's cool about his enclosure, this is one of the first ones that I built. And I had a 50-gallon uh, aquarium. And these doors right here are the tempered panels off the sides of that aquarium. Just cut the silicone off of it, clean them up. They make perfect doors, you just build the, build the enclosure around it. And we are going to get him out and get him put back in his house. Hey bud. Come on, Tig. Come on, buddy. He's a good boy. Come on, buddy. There we go. All right. Now there's a lot of really sharp people that are going to have a lot to say about the Lacey Act and about working to prevent bands. And you'll have to excuse my panting because if you've ever handled a squirrely little corn snake, try handling one that's about 65 pounds. <laughs> but <clears throat> the point that I'm getting at here is that, you know, people are terrified of animals like this. Especially if you're out in the wild, if you're camping, you know, if you're uh, out in the east and you see one of these, people kill them, you know. Anything that people are afraid of needs to die. And it's just the way it is. You hear it all the time. Any good snake is a dead snake. Well, whew. And this is a really good example of how strong these guys are because he is really latched on he's just supporting his own body weight but i mean it actually does restrict my breathing a little bit <laughs> and he's just being cool but the thing that we need to the thing that we need to remember is that animals like this we are destroying their habitat at a terrible rate when we talk about being concerned about the environment the biggest threat to the environment is human beings it's not any one of these animals. You know, well over 98% of all animals on this planet that have lived are extinct now. And if we restrict or stop people from breeding, interacting with and keeping these animals at the same time that we're destroying their environment, then uh, sooner or later they're gonna be gone. And we're not gonna have anything like this to show our kids except these videos. So. It's really important that we learn 
that we need to survive with the other animals on this planet. We're nothing special. We've got a little bit more capacity to reason, but that doesn't make us any better than any of these animals. So if we're going to go in and we're going to be destroying their habitats, then we damn sure need to learn how to cohabitate with them because they've got just as much right to be here as we do, which means we don't tell other people you can't have that because there may come a day when the only reason there's a reticulated python on this planet is because people bred them in captivity. So we really need to take that to heart, guys. And this guy. <laughs> I tell you what, reticulated pythons are certainly not for everybody. And, um, but for the folks that, that have got the uh, desire and the drive to learn about these animals and be able to trust them, and uh, these guys are just amazing. And he is, he's definitely a friend of mine. He's a good boy, and he's done so well, even considering that he's getting ready to shed. So I'm going to put this powerful beast back in his cage. Here you go, buddy. And you see I'm not forcing his head in there. Just going to turn with him, turn with him. Come on, bud. Put your head in there. Come on. There we go. And in you go. That's a good boy. Takes a little while for all that snake to get into his house. Yeah. There he goes, starting to shed in my hand a little bit. So for anybody that's considering getting a reticulated python, by the way, this is what you got to look forward to. <laughs> You've got to be comfortable enough with them to handle them. That's their enrichment. You know, after you've had these guys, they get comfortable with you, you get comfortable with them. They enjoy coming out and interacting. You know, it gets their mind working. So, you got to be prepared to kind of work up a sweat and, uh, you know, not freak out when they latch on to you. Because he had a pretty good grip on me there for a second. All the way around my torso. And when he stretched out, I mean, I could feel him pressing in and stifling my breath a little bit. I could just imagine what it'd be like being a little goat or something like that game over but and it shows a little bit too these are both males they're both approximately the same age one of them's Burmese python one of them's a reticulated python and you can see when I was cleaning cages the Burmese just he's on the floor really casual nonchalant just kind of cruising around every now and then I'd have to reel him back in but um, you've seen the retic as soon as he gets out he's shooting straight towards something he wants to see everything at the same time and your 15 foot snake is in a finite space he can get wrapped around three different racks and hey, he's such a handful which is why i'm so grateful it's almost getting warm outside because it's great take him out in the backyard let him run uh, he absolutely loves it and it's really good enrichment for these guys it's really healthy for them um, absolutely love doing that and i know this video is kind of all over the place I just wanted to kind of do a day in the life thing, you know, mention a couple things. Um, kind of keep people into the loop, you know. We're still worried about the Lacey Act stuff. North Carolina here recently, we had the uh, Argentine black and white tegu ban. It's effective in August of 2022. Uh, we're going to be grandfathered in, those of us that have them already. Um, permitting process and whatnot, we can keep those animals. We just can't get any new ones after, after August. Um, yeah, red tegus, all the other ones, those are perfectly fine. Those are still completely legal. Uh, and like I said in previous videos, I don't like the law. You don't like the law, but we don't change the laws by breaking them. So, you know, abide by everything, work with fish and wildlife, and, you know, we need to do what we need to do. And it's just like anything else, if we don't like a law, we've got the power to change it. Um, we've just, enough of us have to stand up with reasonable, rational arguments and 
you know, it's just like anything else. You have the people that are supposed to be doing the work of, you know, leading for us, don't do it. Get rid of them. Get somebody in there that will. You know, the big corporations have got millions and millions of dollars to dump into these people to keep them in office. What we have is millions and millions of people to keep these guys in office or to get rid of them. We just got to be organized about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed a little day in the life here. Um, I've got a couple more that I want to put out. My off week actually starts Monday morning, which is a couple days from now. So uh, I want to be putting out a uh, really good black and white Argentine Tegu um, care guide. And the purpose behind that, and as soon as it comes up, I'll go back to this video and link it here. Because if you're watching this, you know, the following week, it'll be here. Um, and a big thing is, a big concern, is that with this Tegu band coming up, and everybody being grandfathered in before August that has them already um, is we're afraid you know folks that may not understand them completely may not know their care completely may not really be ready for one are gonna kind of pull the trigger anyway just because they're on a time crunch and so forth um, there's a lot of things to know about black and white tegus uh, that are unique from other reptiles and so it's really important that we you know address those things when I first got mine uh, as soon as we brought her home, she hung out for a couple days and went straight to sleep. We didn't see her for four months, five months. Um, she was down brumating, you know, um, and that's a big disappointment. <laughs> but it's what they do, and you can't interrupt their natural cycle because it's not healthy for them. So, you know, it's stuff like that that you need to be prepared for. You've got to know how to check on them when they're brumating, how to care for them when they're brumating, um, and, you know, things that you don't do. Um, you know, like if you're feeding a uh, tegu while it's brumating, if you're waking it up to feed it, um, it can die because the metabolism slows down so much that that food just goes toxic in its stomach and it, um, it'll it die. So, you know, there's a lot of things that people need to take into consideration and we're going to do a full video about that and it's going to tie in with a lot of NC Arc stuff. So keep an eye out for that. <sighs> I'm going to go dry off a little bit and uh, let these guys enjoy their clean enclosures. Uh, so definitely, guys, like the videos, get subscribed to the channel. We'll be back soon. I've got a couple more videos that I'm getting out this week. And I will see you next time on Intrepid Exotics. Do you have a natural love for animals? Then come along with us as we explore what it's like living with and caring for some of the most unique animals on the planet, our reptiles. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, Help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics.